So if you guys have been following the sports scene outside of NASCAR, you guys know that the MLB trade deadline came and went. It's a time of year, a magical time of year, where the big teams like the Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Cardinals, you know, they have World Series aspirations, and they're looking to trade some of their prospects away to try to get some of those big stars from these smaller teams that have no aspirations, they're well down in the standings. Thus, their goal is to look towards the future and try to get some prospects to potentially better their chances two to three years down the road. And all this got me thinking, with the craziness we've seen from this 2023 silly season, where it seems like anything and everything has been debated or rumored, what if NASCAR had something like a trade deadline, where you could trade drivers to other teams and manufacturers? Now, obviously, I know sponsorship is a main reason why we don't do this. There are certain drivers that are tied to sponsorship, and there are certain teams that are tied to that funding, so it would be an absolute mess to trade some of these drivers. Though, in sports like Major League Baseball, they have things where you can get cash considerations from other teams. I know this all too well being a St. Louis Cardinals fan because we got Nolan Arenado and $50 million. Basically, the Rockies were paying for an entire season of Nolan Arenado on the St. Louis Cardinals. And in return, we basically gave up nothing. So thank you, incompetence of Colorado. Man, that was appreciated. So if you guys watch this channel and you guys are objective, you like things that are based in reality, this is not the video for you. And honestly, I don't blame if you decide not to watch. Though if you've got a crazy hypothetical side, you like all the mental gymnastics that go on, boy, you guys are going to love this one because we're gonna look at all the potential trades that could happen in a situation, in a scenario where trades are allowed in NASCAR, featuring all the big stars, all the big teams in this 2023 silly season. So the first driver we're going to start out with is Tyler Reddick as man this cat has been wild over the past couple weeks somebody's got to contain him not only in the fact that he has won a couple races in the past month but also his contract situation is not only was he picked up by Richard Childress Racing for the 2023 season his option was picked up but after that, he went out and signed with 2311 Racing for the 2024 season. And this right here, I made a video on it. It put Richard Childress Racing in a vulnerable position. It didn't seem like they had a lot of power. And they now also have a driver. They have a lame duck season ahead of them. Since that video came out, it was confirmed straight from the horse's mouth that Tyler Reddick is going to be back in that number eight car for 2023. Though I still feel Richard Childress Racing, he still feels a bit of betrayal from this whole thing and how it played out. Though in the NASCAR trade world, his hands aren't exactly tied behind his back as RC can make a move to trade Tyler Reddick to another team, which would obviously be 2311 Racing and Toyota. So in this trade deal, I've got Tyler Reddick going to Toyota and 2311 Racing. So now Toyota has the rest of Tyler Reddick's contract, but obviously they got to give something up. And I think in this situation, you would have to look at some of the guys in their pipeline. Number one, Brandon Jones. And I say this because obviously in the situation where you're trading away Tyler Reddick, that means sponsorship's going to fall and you're going to need a bit of funding. Brandon Jones, he has Menard sponsorship. That would help Richard Childress Racing financially in the future, whether they decide to use some of that funding in the Cup Series or if they decide to just run an Xfinity car. And then RCR and Chevrolet would pick up two prospects. And number one is Chandler Smith, as this is a mature driver. This is someone that I think has the potential to be a NASCAR Cup Series winner and champion in the future. And also Corey Hine. This is someone that has won Atlanta. He's won at Gateway. He's done a phenomenal job in the KBM equipment from what we've seen in the 51. In all likelihood, he is going to be full-time in the Truck Series next season or at the latest in 2024. So Chevrolet in many ways picks up a prospect from Toyota to put in their system. Plus, it also gives them some options as to who they want in that number eight car going forward, not only in the short term, but also in the long term, the longevity of that entry. The next big driver to hit the market is Cal Busch, as this is a driver, Cal Busch right here, that's demanding a massive salary. He wants a Kellogg's or M&M's to be his sponsor, though in this motorsport nowadays, that has dried up with NASCAR not being at its prime. Because of that, Joe Gibbs is having a headache keeping this guy, and therefore it makes sense to put him on the open market to trade him to an organization that could potentially be able to piece together that contract that Kyle Busch wants. The first trade I got sends Cal Busch to Stuart Haas Racing as Gene Haas, you know, he's got the Haas automation business, they can afford his salary. He goes there to race the number 41, and in return, Joe Gibbs Racing gets a massive prospects. Number one, they get Cole Custer. Now, whether they decide to put him, you know, in the Xfinity series or if they decide to put him as the replacement, 
the temporary replacement for Kyle Busch to try to develop Ty Gibbs. Cole Custer, this is a driver that has cup experience. Maybe he's a guy like Daniel Suarez where he just needs to be put in the right place. You never know what could happen if he goes to another team. The second guy that's coming in is Riley Herbst, as in many ways, this is going to be a piece to help put together some sponsorship in the Xfinity series to help fund you know, a car in the lower leagues to get some options for the future. And also, not to mention Monster Energy, you know, they're now gonna be potentially more invested in the Cup Series program, and that's gonna be important, especially if Ty Gibbs were to replace Kyle Busch in this trade. Monster Energy obviously is heavily invested in Ty Gibbs in the Xfinity Series, so this move is important in many ways for not only Joe Gibbs and Stuart Haas Racing, but Toyota getting some of the main guys from Ford. The next trade involves an undoing from 2007, as keep in mind, with the idea of trades, this allows Henrik Motorsports to potentially move contracts, and that includes the contracts of both Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman, which will expire in 2023. So in this trade between Henrik Motorsports and Joe Gibbs Racing, Henrik Motorsports, they get Kyle Busch back. Everything comes full circle as Kyle Busch now takes over the team that used to be the 88 for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And in return, a young Arizona prospect, Alex Bowman, moves over to Joe Gibbs Racing to drive the number 18 Interstate Toyota. People might think this is borderline insane, but if you think about it, Henrik Motorsports, Ally, they can afford Kyle Busch's contract now. There might be a situation where Ally might not want Kyle Busch, but they can pay for his contract and also it frees up some options in the future when Kyle Busch retires that Henrik Motorsports, you know, they're not tied down to four drivers. They can move a couple drivers around to add potential prospects to their team in the future. As for Joe Gibbs Racing, and in particular Alex Bomey, you know, this is a guy that seems like he's shadowed behind Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott. He's not that number one guy in Hendrick. Now that he's on Joe Gibbs, he might be more of a priority on that team as that is his major incentive. And as for Joe Gibbs, not only is he a much cheaper alternative to Kyle Busch, but also you're getting drivers for the future. Joe Gibbs Racing's roster isn't getting older. They're going after a place Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. in the future. So now that you have Alex Bowman, you have now Christopher Bell, Ty Gibbs, and now Bowman as those prospects that are going to help keep Joe Gibbs competitive when their big guys start retiring and falling off in terms of performance. Next up, we got to look at Strudos Racing, as in the future, they're going to lose Eric Amarola. Whether that's after the 2022 season, like originally planned, or in 2023 or 2024, as it's not only Eric Amarola that's going to be leaving, but also Smithfield. As you look at their sponsorship, it has decreased a bit over the past few years. So in all indication, in all likelihood, Smithfield, they're going to completely be out of the sport when Eric Amarola retires. So now is the time to kind of look towards the future and try to find that guy that fits the organizational mold. A veteran driver, a driver that has Cup Series experience that also brings in some needed sponsorship. And so I think the perfect trading partner for Strudos Racing and Ford would rely with Spire Motorsports and driver Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy is an underrated talent and not only does he have a stacking pennies mentality to try to get up the ladder, but he also has some sponsorship. Built Bar and Shoulder Systems, they have about 10 to 20 races worth of sponsorship. So I think this would be an ideal trade right here. Sturdos Racing, they acquire Corey LaJoy. Now where they put him for the future is yet to be determined. Maybe they run him in Xfinity for one year to get some experience, get ready for Cup. Or they do something like they did with Ryan Priest, have him run a couple races in Cup or something like that. Either way, they have Corey LaJoy in their system to be a guy alongside Chase Briscoe and whoever they decide to replace Kevin Harvick with. And as for the return, obviously they're going to look towards the Ford camp since Strudos Racing doesn't have the biggest prospect pool and I think Ford would end up trading two drivers. The first one is Zane Smith. Zane Smith is an incredible talent and underrated talent. He will be in the Cup Series one day. So maybe this is a driver that Spire Motorsports, they could really put him one or two ways. Number one, they put him in that Cup car, the number seven car in the Cup Series. Or keep in mind, they have a Truck Series team that's run by Zane Smith's former crew chief, Kevin Bono Mannion. That could be a perfect fit to help build that Spire number seven truck into the future. The next driver I got coming from the Ford camp is Taylor Gray, as I know the results seem to not show it, but I think Taylor Gray is going to be a driver. He's going to be a talented driver in the future. 
It just seems like a good move for a Spartan Motorsports team that wants to win races, wants to succeed in the future. I think flipping Corey LaJoy in the now and building up for the later is a good move for that organization. And finally, guys, as a St. Louis Cardinals fan, we're going to do this trade right here because you know the Cardinals, they love having nostalgia tours. They love bringing back some old players. We got Albert Pujols. We got him back to rep the number five with the birds on the bat for one more year. And we're going to do one like this in NASCAR as Chevrolet is going to acquire Martin Truex Jr. And obviously, Johnny Morris and Bass Pro Shops is going to follow him over because, you know, he has been invested in his career for its entirety, except for the fact in like 2014 when it looked like he was just going to abandon him and leave him out to dry. But after that, Johnny Morris, loyal to Martin Truex Jr. And what's going to happen with that? Well, because of the funding, that is going to allow Junior Motorsports to purchase a charter and go full-time cup racing as this would be something that comes full circle. Martin Truex Jr. began his career at Dale Jr.'s Chance 2 Motorsport and now he's going to go out helping the man that changed his career build up his NASCAR Cup Series program. What a way to go out. In return, Toyota would get a hefty loft from this. As Ty Gibbs, he would likely go into that number 19. So in this situation, you know, they're going to have to preserve the Xfinity program. So they're going to get Justin Allgaier and Josh Berry from Junior Motorsports. Justin Allgaier, I don't need to explain. Brent is an invested company into his career. They've been heavily involved, I mean, in the last decade. It's one of those subway right combinations. Justin Allgaier and Brent, that is going to help them preserve their Xfinity program. And then we got Josh Berry. You know, this is kind of a depth move. And now the only argument against Josh Berry coming to this organization is that we know that Josh Berry, he doesn't like Monster Energy. He despises its taste. We saw that on the track in Indy when he took out both the Monster Energy cars in two laps. He prefers more of a Berry energy drink, obviously because of his name. So I think you might run into some problems there. Still, talented driver, somebody that could help Joe Gibbs Racing could be on their radar in the future. So that's it for all the hypothetical crazy trades. As I'd like to hear down in the comments below, guys, what type of trades you think would happen if NASCAR were to allow trades? What drivers would be flipped in preparation for the end of 2022 or the 2023 season? And with that, guys, this is Nathan for NRF Productions signing out. And just remember, guys and gals, life's a beach and then you drive.